we'll switch over um, to uh, Betsy and Faye and, and Amy and anyone else that, that happens to uh, jump on here with us uh, in regards to our, our um, education bill. And um, Faye, uh, I guess, uh, if you want to give us a little update on on hooking the what we talked about hooking the three different proposals uh, together and into one one bill that uh, seemed to make sense, uh, if if you could talk a little bit about that, I guess Jim was supposed to be here, but. <clears throat> Like normally, uh, he was he was booked up or already or busy somewhere. So, um, so if you could lead off, um, we know all you folks, and you just introduce yourselves as your turn comes up. Uh, that'll be fine. Sure. So absolutely. welcome and good to see you. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, my name is Faye Mack. I am here from Hunger Free Vermont today. Thanks for having us back in. Um, so just to, to share a little bit of an update and frame out this conversation today, um, Senator Starr had reached out to us about the idea of, you know, there are a lot of food security and local food related requests this year and, and opportunities. And is there a way to kind of address a few of them holistically and comprehensively because we know that they all are needed to work together in order to feed the full system. And so um, Hunger Free and Vermont Feed and, and some other folks connected and the three where we really found some alignment around around how to sort of holistically have have a single bill is around how we're feeding kids at school. So focusing in on school food, knowing that there are a couple of other food security and local agriculture related requests, um, appropriations requests like Vermonters Feeding Vermonters and the NOFA Farm Share Program. Um, but those, those feel separate because they're not part of the institutions of, of schools, but there are three school related um, opportunities, universal school meals, the local purchasing incentive, um, also Vermont, also called Vermont Food for Vermont Kids, um, and fully funding farm to school at five hundred thousand dollars are all connected within within you know how we're feeding kids when they're at school, um, and the ways that local agriculture connects into that. And so, we're really excited about the idea of approaching all three together. Um, one of the things that became really clear in hearing testimony from our partners over the last couple of weeks. Um, it's just how interrelated they are and how, you know, the the support that comes from a fully funded farm to school program is really needed to be able to provide the technical assistance to make the local purchasing incentive successful um, and strong, you know, the local purchasing bill would help schools offset the cost of universal school meals and improve meal quality. Um, so they're all so connected that it, it makes a lot of sense to look at them together. So we're excited about the opportunity and. And today, I think the, the hope is just to talk about what that might look like and what the process would be. Um, and, um, and if Jim is able to, to join at some point or, or afterwards, you know, we're happy to work directly with him or Mike um, on Ledge Council in, in helping to kind of craft this too in whatever way we can be helpful. Yeah. Well, I, you know, with with as many programs as there are out there, I I just feel that if as we move forward, if we can have a packaged program that works well together as well as uh, our students. Um, That'll be great, and I know, um, you know, the the feds are talking even about having some type of a federal deal with universal meals, and if if we've got a system that's pretty well ready to go, and that breaks loose, uh, you know, we could 
we could get into that system, I would really quick. And so um, that's, uh, you know, that's good that we're working in that direction. I don't, the committee, what do you think um, in regards to that? No comments? Got them I all. Think. We got them all tied, uh, tongue tied. <laughs> it seems like a good approach. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, the uh, have you have you gotten to the point where uh, you could probably no drafting has been done yet. I we we aren't able to work with ledge ledge council directly unless you or another senator gives us permission. So we need we need a, a written or verbal on this or some some way for for Jim or Michael Grady to get instruction to connect with us and then we're able to do that. But we haven't been able to get we haven't gotten that yet. Linda, are you on Linda? Yes. Did did you get did you get that word to Jim uh, in regard in regards to uh, working with with Faye and Betsy and and the crew to work on that to work on this? All I've done so far is invite him to this meeting, which he couldn't come to, and ask him if he'd been in touch. Which I believe he's gotten uh, correspondence from Faye and Betsy and Amy. But I'll, I'll I'll find out how to officially let him know so he can take it over. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, did I just? I thought. You, yeah, I thought we'd taken care of that, and and uh, so we'll we'll keep working on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris. Well, maybe Anthony had a question i don't want to jump i was just to say the thing to do is to send to send an email to jim and and to Faye and to a few others like connect them all in an email with bobby or one of our names on it and say that jim we'd like you to work with these folks to do whatever so send them send everybody an email to, I, I, to jim to Faye, to betsy and to amy and say we want you to work with these folks mr yeah. chair would you like me to do that right now uh, you could, but I thought that's what was happening uh, from the office. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and and if we double send it, it won't do any harm. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll take care of that, Linda, and I'll copy you and the chair. Thank you. Great. All. Um, and, and I will say that yeah. both the local incentive purchasing bill and the universal school meals bill have been introduced in the house. So there's language. So I think we can move, you know, it can come together pretty quickly once we're able to get going. And you would so, want the language to be the same? Yes. And you don't see a need to change or work on, build on what they've done? No, I think I think we're really interested once the your committee and, and whoever else this kind of bill would go to starts to take a look at it about what kinds of um, changes may may arise. But I think at the moment, at least from the I looked at Betsy for the local purchasing um, language, but from the universal school meals language, we're really happy with what was introduced in the house and as a good starting point. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Betsy. I just said I believe the house bill that was introduced was the same <clears throat> local purchasing incentive bill that passed out of uh, your committee last year. Um, so I think there is a section about corrections that might, I don't know if that remains or if it's a school nutrition focus, maybe that goes somewhere else in legislation. But, um, but we'd be happy to do that. And I just, um, would ask the committee and Mr. Chair if there's anything we can do to best support um, you to get the information you need for this to move it along. Um, was that somebody with a question? No. Um, the um, 
the corrections part, uh, did I don't recall, we had that in there last year in our bill. I think we did, yeah. And and uh, Betsy, are you are you asking if that should come out and just deal with the um, with the school and and um, that if if we leave corrections in, then probably Sears will would want to look at it because he looks after the corrections issues and i think if if we could keep it narrowed where only uh ag education and and hopefully appropriations would be the three committees that would have to deal with it it would it would be easier and as long as we're on this have any of you you folks have been in education already? No? So, you um, know. Not, no. Yeah, we have not this year. Well, it's, it's going to be important that you get, um, you get hold of Chairman uh, Brian um, and, and uh, get an appointment in there. But I think being him being new you might want to go in only once the kind of the rough draft has been put together uh, and i i don't know if there were other um other major changes to his the committee makeup in there or not do you guys know anything about that yeah i can tell you um cheryl hooker is the vice chair She's new on the committee. Uh, Thomas Chittenden is a brand new senator, and uh, Josh Terenzini is a brand new senator. So there's, I think, Perch was right. on it last year. And, oh, Lyons might be a new member, too. Oh, goodness. But, yeah, you know, with Chittenden County, uh, several from Chittenden County on there, it might be a very positive thing because uh, they, you know, they've been pushing universal meals in Chittenden County for, for a long time and have, they have a very successful uh, program. And so that, that might be good. And then you have two from Rotland on there. Yep. yep. Uh, and they could certainly, they would be helpful. Um, but, uh, Campion, you know, I don't know if we, I don't know if we got to, uh, to talk with him about this last year much, uh, but um, you know, I, I think he would be very understanding of the issues. Uh, Chris, um, I would guess they are understanding. Everyone's going to love this idea. It's just going to be how do we pay for it? So, so do we have some strategy that's cooking up? I know we've been in this sort of de facto universal meal time, and and so I'm just curious. Maybe I missed that part, but do we have, uh, Mr. Chair? Have you guys figured that out already? Um, no. Um. As, as my wife has heard me say many times, I don't get too concerned over the money. You can usually find it if you've got enough people, uh, you know, looking for it. Um, but uh, I think a positive thing we've got going is that um, Washington, they keep talking about all this money for education. Well, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, we've already given them hundreds of millions already for our 80 odd thousand students. And, and uh, there should be some of this federal money that 
at least could get this thing kicked off and running. And it's going to prove that it's all if, if we can do the picture. Um, the, um, you know, so, and they're, they're talking about a universal meals program in DC. Um, so I think the money will, will be there um, if we get the program put together and it makes good common sense to, um, to move forward. I've, I've talked with, with uh, Jane uh, to some degree about it and she, well, you know, let's get it put together and, and we'll go from there. So but if we're, my attitude is if we're adding local incentives to help farmers, this is a 30 0 vote. I mean, this is, I could be wrong, but, but it, it's a good idea. So, um, I'm all for putting it together and, you know, if we don't put it together, and then money comes along, someone else will gobble it up. So we, oh, we should be ready for that. I think that's a smart strategy. Yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, Faye. I just uh, I wanted to say I could chime in a little bit around the, the cost and the federal conversation, too, if it's helpful, just to provide a yeah. bit of context of what we're hearing. And, and also to say um, I really appreciate the note about, about um, Senate education this year, and we haven't been able to get in there, um, and we would love to, and and perhaps it, you know, just to offer if it makes sense for there to be a joint hearing at some point, since you folks have have a, a really deep knowledge about these um, these bills, it, that could be an interesting way to introduce it as well, um, and have a conversation with the education committee. Um, but in terms of, of expense, um, so I can share that we're finalizing a new round of our uh, estimate on the financial impact that Universal School Meals would have on the education fund. Um, and so we'll have data from both the 2018, fall of 2018 and the fall of 2019. So we have two years worth of, of cost to take a, of data to take a look at for our estimate. And we're in the process of um, working with the Joint Fiscal Office on, um, I think they're likely developing a new fiscal note this year for it. So so there will be more information. I, I can say from our, our we are, I was just looking at it before this and um, looking at 2019 data, we're coming out pretty close to where we had come out in tw with 2018 data. So it's remaining pretty consistent, which makes me feel really confident in the estimate. Um, I also just to say at the federal level, there are, I mean, there, there are options certainly if uh, more funding comes into the state, absolutely. Um, and at the same time, I know that, that um, there is a lot of information swirling around around how Congress might shift the school meal, you know, shift school meals and, and move toward universal school meals. Um, our sense is that there is a likely opportunity to enhance the way the two federal options where that schools can use to go to universal school meals. So either making more schools eligible um, for the community eligibility provision, which is the one that works a little bit better for schools, or to just increase the financial reimbursements that schools would get. Um, I believe that Senator Sanders is planning to reintroduce his full universal school meals bill again this year. Um, that I, I just, I think we're really excited about that and excited to work on it. And I think it's going to take a while. <laughs> um, so the, the view or, or just the, the way that I've, I've heard you, Mr. Chair, and others talk about having Vermont be well set up to take advantage of, of these opportunities as they come from the federal government, I think is really smart and um, it will allow us to kind of keep moving and not just have to wait for, you know, whatever Congress may or may not be able yeah. to do. Yeah, uh, Amy. Hello, uh, for the record, Amy Schollenberger, and I work with both Hunger Free Vermont and the Farm to School Network. Um, I just, I, to Senator Pearson's question, I wanted to highlight um, also two other things in addition to what Faye said. 
Um, the first is the universal school meal does um, envision a pot of one-time money to help schools with the transition to universal school meals, which might be more readily available this year. Um, so even if the whole bill doesn't move forward this year, perhaps getting that pot of money set up so that schools could have access to it to Senator Starr's point, if, if things are percolating, um, then we would be ready for that. The, the other thing that's a, a relatively small but ongoing appropriation um, in the universal school meals bill is the position, another position in the child nutrition program at the agency of education. And, um, you know, we, we are thinking that school, more schools may be transitioning over to universal meals, regardless of whether the bill passes or not, um, because nothing prohibits them from doing it. And we would like to make sure that the agency has the capacity to help those programs or those schools transition. So those are two things that are a smaller price tag. Um, one is one time, one is ongoing. Um, and, and that coupled with the local food incentive could really help schools to move towards universal meals as, as we go forward. Yeah, I, I know Rosie, I think testified to the point that you know, she got pretty, pretty solid and that the main thing is to go slow, but have, have stuff lined up. But uh, that's, that's where the, the new employee would, would be housed is over in education as a nutritionist. Yes. In the, in the nutrition program as a, basically a help a support person for schools. Um, could, could I also ask a clarifying question, Senator Starr? So when we're working with Ledge Council, um, we'll probably have to know this answer, whether you're envisioning this to be a committee bill um, or whether you're thinking you'll introduce it and then get it, get it referred. Well, I don't see if, I don't see if the committee's agreeable, we'd just make it a committee bill. A committee bill is really a lot stronger bill than an individual bill. And if, if the committee feels comfortable, uh, you know, we would, we would draft it up as a committee bill. It would go almost direct, come to committee, but be on the floor the next day, but have it referred back to committee for further review. And um, then, you know, pr try to put the finishing touches on it uh, with education. Uh, but we've got to, we've got to get those folks involved in and uh, because that that'll make you know if you get our five and their five, you know that's a third of the Senate already that you've got on your side. So you only need five more or so, and or six, mm -hmm. and you're six more, and you're home free. So I think they have six. They have six. I think so. Oh. They, oh, so they aren't a committee of five. No, they do have six. Yep. Oh, hell, we could even lose one of them and still have 10. <laughs> um, but um, how about your new guy, uh, Brian, from from Rutland that's in there? Is, is he in um, kids' well-being and all that good stuff? or? Well, he's got four kids, so um, I think he's pretty much on board. <laughs> well, it must cost him a lot every week just to feed them. Um, yep. But in a case like that, can you imagine if it costs um, four dollars a meal? So you got sixteen bucks a day for five days is seventy bucks um, just to pay for hot lunch. I mean. Uh, 70 bucks a week um, that's uh, yeah it can't be can't be easy um, so um, yeah so does that answer your question Amy did you ask that yes I did and thank you and uh, 
we we were hoping you would say it was a committee bill so i'm i'm glad that's the route you're going well, a, thank you good, it's a good thing you told me to say that <laughs> no no uh no a committee bill is is the best way to to go you know on a especially on a big bill you, you you don't want to just have one name stuck up there um so we'll uh I think uh, we'll keep working on this until we can uh, get it where, you know, all the members are, are happy and could sign on. We'll work off the draft as long as we can uh, to work again, working it toward a committee bill. Yeah. Um, so there are other questions that you folks would like to raise uh, Anthony? Yeah, this is, I want to ask just about the farm share program. Uh, you, you folks are obviously familiar with them. Does it fit into a package that you're looking at or is it separate? So um, we talked with NOFA, who are, who's the lead um, with that right. request and they run that program. And it's, um, it, it's not connected with schools. And that was where the right, sure, free request sure. feel really connected with schools. Um, the farm share program is a, an appropriations request too. It doesn't need to be right. part of a bill. So they're hoping to um, have that funded through that way. Right, that's what I presume that, because it's not, it's not really legislated except that the money goes to somebody to administer the money, but you folks would certainly be supportive of that. Yeah, absolutely. We're very supportive of that. And we're very supportive of the Vermont Food Bank's requests as well, too, as kind of rounding out the food security um, picture right now. Right. Okay. I mean, I presume so. I just wanted to make sure it was on the table. Yes. Yeah, and both of those issues uh, deal basically with just money. It, you know, it isn't like we need to put a bill together. So... so the the three the three issues we have are program policy issues um so um i think if if we do a good job putting that together um i don't know chris if we get a 30 zip vote but if we can get colin Moore and parent on it might be I'm an easier yet, I think. So. And I don't know about Collimore, but apparently we could break his arm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if senator, no. if senators don't like kids or farmers, then they can vote no. But, uh, <laughs> that seems that would surprise me. Well, I don't have four kids I, like Senator Terenzini, but I have a two and a half year old, so I I get it. <laughs> if they don't like farmers, they probably shouldn't be on this committee. Um, yeah, no, there's the secret of um, the secret of legislation pass, and especially in a committee, is to you keep working on it until the whole crew basically can agree upon it. And, and uh, you know, sometimes over in the house, I worked with a chair for years over there and worked with, uh, you know, with the minority party as the majority party in my committee room. And, um, and that's the way, that's the way I learned to do it, to get stuff done. And, and I think that it was, um, you know, quite successful. You don't maybe get everything you want, but you get a good bill that everyone can support and move forward in. And the end game is to get to the goalpost with, a, with something. And even if it's a three-pointer, you're better off getting there than, than, you're not, than you are not getting there at all. So, um, so anyways, uh, are there other questions of our, our guests this morning? If not, and do you folks have any further suggestions for us? No, everybody's 
Chris. Well, just to say, uh, we've already connected Jim uh, and and our panel here um, by email, so that is up and running. Good, good. Um, and Batsy. Um, just if there was particular timing you'd like us to work towards uh, when you'd like to see this back in committee. Well, um, I we're going to do our chicken bill next week, I hope, and uh, and we we've got you know we need to get yours going as soon as we can, uh, so. Uh, yeah, because if we don't hustle along, um, we want to, I think by crossover date, we want this baby uh, to cross over to the house. So, um, you know, as soon as you guys feel comfortable that it's where you want it to be or where you think it, it should be, um, get back uh, with us with a day or two of notice so that we can get it plugged into the schedule. And um, we'll try to, I don't know, I think that's a good idea if we could, um, once we get a handle on it and know where we are, we'll have a joint hearing uh, with education to present it to them so they can, um, you know, for an hour or a half hour might take just to um, get them on to thinking about it. Any other ideas? No? Good. The, um, well, I think I think we're starting to roll in the right direction. It isn't that we haven't uh, been thinking about it. We've heard a lot of uh, So um, if there are no other questions and before I let you go, anytime you, know, you feel that we need to hear something from you, um, you know, don't be shy, uh, let us, let us know and and we'll um, we'll figure out the, the issue. Um, so with that, uh, thanks a lot for for your time today and uh, hopefully we'll get some apples coming off that tree. Thank um, you all very much. Yes, thank yeah, you so much. Thank you. Thanks. So um So uh, what else, uh, is there anything else that you guys want to get going on? Uh, hopefully um, we, we can do the, the rewrite of the uh, on-farm uh, composting and foraging bill. It'd be good to get that out next week if we could. We didn't um, change it much either, did we? Or we, we're not planning on changing much of it. Well, this, no. is, this is where the, the, the ag agency's language, Here, you know, yeah. Yeah. he wants to deal with, uh, what did he call them? Uh, soil implements more broadly. Amendments. And my attitude is I'm open to that if it means the two agencies are supportive. Yeah, only because we've got to have um, A&R with us or it'll never move out of the next room. And... Uh, and I mean, they've got to be with us very supportively to convince them to even do it. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to hold that bill up. Um, no. You know what I mean? Um, no. Because we got it passed last year. We just never got it across the other body. Yeah. Um, uh, Corey? Um, so I, another thing that I want to take up too, and I think in light of of what the Natural Resources Committee is doing with the governor's um, executive order. I don't have any confidence that that committee will do anything on Act 250 for the next two years, in all honesty. 
Um, and I know there's some agricultural pieces there. So I don't know if it makes sense to talk to Becca. Um, my understanding is the house may take up some small act 250 pieces on agriculture and their ag committee. So I don't know if we just, I want to potentially take some looks at that. Um, I know it's, it's a different strategy there, but there's some work that needs to be done on the agricultural end. And, and then, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think the committee is going to be able to do it. So I don't know if we could maybe do some work in here to get it done. What, what are the issues? Uh, Corey? Uh, I think I'll have a bill language in the next couple of days that I can start to prime people on. Um, because I mean, I don't know. I think, you guys, yeah, you guys, we all were there when um, when we were told that, you know, we should be working on COVID issues at least this first half until after town meeting. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get bogged down with something that that's going to derail the two items that we've been talking about getting done. Um, I, you know, I think, I think we should, I, I mean, as I soon think with as you COVID, can, we should. Act 250 is, changes are probably related in the sense that a lot of these farmers have struggled through COVID and some of these relief in Act 250 might help them with their on-farm accessory businesses. Well, if, if they're, if there's something there that we can tweak the law, like a lot of on-farm accessory businesses, we've already dealt with, you know, and exempted yeah. them from shit about everything that you could get nailed with. Uh, I mean, we got, they can build small houses for weekend guests um, on, on um, land, they can put five on an acre or two. Uh, you know, uh, they can hold events uh, that are almost exempt free. Uh, you know, we've done a, quite a bit of um, stuff to enhance on farm businesses, I thought. Um, so, as soon as you get I'll a bring, draft, I'll bring the ideas as soon as they have them all put together. Yeah, that would be the best way. Um, you know, if it's stuff like that that we that we did that made sense, uh, it rolled along uh, pretty good. I think, Chris, you guys passed the uh, uh, that bill last year on the on the small tiny houses and. Yep. Yep, that was, uh, uh, and I think it went into law in the miscellaneous tax bill. Yes. Um, so the, the homestead's a little more uh, straightforward. Yep. Um, uh, Brian? I was just trying to figure out when crossover is. Is it? So week after, we, we're off town meeting week. Yeah. We're back the following week. So that would be the second week we're back. It, that Friday, right. that Friday on the second week uh, of of March is March, crossed March, over. March twelfth, then. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, you can't you can't dub around too long. You know, we've got to keep moving uh, forward here. Um, uh, Chris. Uh, I wouldn't want to jeopardize any of the bills we've been just talking about, but um, I, I've talked to some of you about the, this called right to repair on ag equipment. Oh. The house has taken some hearings. I, I, I filed the bill, but I think some of our editing staff have been out. So, so we haven't seen it yet, but, and, and, and it might make perfect sense for the end of March or something, but I, I just I wouldn't want that to be totally off center Polina co-sponsored it and, the basic idea is, particularly during the pandemic, do we really need to force everybody to go to an authorized dealer to fix their own tractor or whatever? Um, 
So it's an interesting issue. I hope we could take some hearings on it, but uh, not at the expense of some of the things we've just outlined. Yeah, no. And um, so we'll have that. Uh, Corey, will, Corey will have uh, his ideas and the, um, we'll try to get Dan in uh, next week somewhere is in the schedule um, so that we can figure out if there is something that we haven't caught on yet with uh, and he suggests and, and we think it's um, a, a move forward, we could get something across um, before crossover, but uh, that'll be a, a secondary issue from the two main issues. Uh, Chris? Uh, I'm reminded it'd be good to get Ryan in to find out really what are we talking about? What do they need for payment and ecosystem services? Um, I don't want that to drop if, if at all possible. Yeah. Uh, but it may not, I don't think it's a bill, but there, there's got to be some requests. So I, I, I would at least maybe we would all do well to understand that. Yeah, well, uh, I think Linda's probably listening. So we'll jot that down. And then when we work the schedule, it it's pretty, um, on Zoom, it's, it's pretty easy to uh, switch gears because the witnesses don't have to travel to Montpelier, you know, if they're in an office or at home. Uh, they can pick the phone up and take, you know, 20 minutes, half hour or an hour, and then they're back, um, back doing uh, their their regular work. So um, I think we should be able to do that fine. Um, so any... Um, Anything else that anyone wants to bring up that we should be um, dealing with in, here, you know, this week? Okay. Um, yeah. And, um, well, hopefully Michael will be with us tomorrow. Linda, are you still on? Oh, yeah. Uh, is Michael supposed to be on with us tomorrow? He'll be here from 9 to 10, and then he has to bounce over to someplace else, but Kelly will be here from 10 to 10.45 to continue taking your advice. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> yeah, then we've got uh, a bunch of Agrimart, a uh, group of Agrimart uh, uh farmers late uh, tomorrow morning <clears throat> so we'll we'll have them in <clears throat> well I guess we're we're good uh, to go Brian uh, maybe you ought to take Corey along as your assistant so he can get in and see the governor <laughs> Be glad yeah, to. Yeah, that talking with the neighbor's kid or something, and uh, you know, that's not like talking to the governor himself, the parent. <laughs> no, um, no, that's true. Well, we'll uh, we'll <laughs> call it a morning, uh, uh, folks, and uh, we'll uh, see you on the floor. Okay.